With things warming up here in southeast Queensland, Australia, we're starting to see one of our most destructive pests enter into the patch, the dreaded Queensland fruit fly. Uh, what I've done is altered the hoop house to protect a couple of tomato plants and made a bit of a makeshift barrier over some blueberries down the back. And I thought I'd just bring you along and give you a bit of a look at how I'm protecting our plants. I might also give you folks who are planting our brassicas at the moment, your broccoli and your cabbages, a few ideas on how you can keep the cabbage butterflies away from those plants. So here's a bit of a look at the entranceway to our hoop house. It's a pretty basic construction. It's just using fairly cheap materials we found around the place, some scavenged and some bought. So I'll just take you inside the hoop house and that'll give you a better idea on how it's all put together. So before we go in, I thought I'd show you these little clamps that I've made up to help hold the veggie net together and also use it as a bit of a clamp to hold it to the frame itself, the 50 mil pipe. These ones here though, these, this little one is a slightly smaller one, I think it's a 40 mil or inch and a half. So it's a, probably about a 20 mil or three quarter inch section that I've cut off the length of pipe and then made a cut down it. Now these little corner bits help to dig into the uh, veggie net, so you can actually gather up a fair amount, more than you could clamp with a clothes peg. Just pop that over the top and that will hold it fairly securely in place. Um, I've used it around the doors here and also, as you just saw, to actually clamp some of the veggie net to the 50 mil or 2 inch pipe that makes up the hoop. So, very easy, very cheap to knock together, and it does a better job at holding the netting together than using clothes pegs or some of the other little spring-loaded clamps you can buy from the $2 shop. So with this section here, I've got two pieces of veggie net that overlap each other. I'll just leave these little clamps on there so I don't lose them, and basically just open it up and walk through that way. With these little clamps too, it's easy enough to um, block it off from the inside as well. Just grab one of these clamps, peg it on, and away you go. So just looking back from the other end of the hoop house, you can see we've got basically hoops that span the width of the construction. It's about three metres, I think, wide and roughly six metres long. These hoops are made out of the 50 mil or two inch pipe I mentioned before that is pushed over the top of the star pickets or T-posts. Basically, you can use whatever you have on hand, I suppose. And from there we have some battens that keep the shade cloth from falling down or the veggie net from falling down into the structure and it also helps to keep the hoops an equal distance apart. They're secured onto the hoops using some little galvanised screws and then the shade cloth goes over the top of that. The shade cloth itself is held on using zip ties and I've never had any problems with some of the storms that pass through here. Uh, they have been known to rip roofs off or roofing tin from houses and we see virtually no movement in the shade cloth whatsoever, mainly because it's just full of holes and the wind goes straight through it. So it's not something we really have to worry about flying off and causing a, an issue somewhere else. So obviously I'm using two different cloths for the hoop house. I'm using a 50% shade cloth on this side and that's going to block the afternoon sun. It gets a little bit harsh here. And on this side here, I'm just using the plain white veggie net, which is small enough to keep out the Queensland fruit fly. Um, smaller pests can get through like aphids and um, also mites as you'll see in a moment but yeah pretty much all the Queensland fruit fly and the cabbage moth can't get through there so that's the reason why I've got two different grades on here for the time being. Uh, normally if it was just a shade house here in southeast Queensland all I'd go with is a 30% shade covering but the holes are just a little bit too large to keep out the Queensland fruit fly I think. I just thought I'd bring you over here and show you how I've connected the pipework to the star posts themselves. So what I've done to begin with is basically made sure that the, the hoop lengths that I've made are going to fit for the width of the construction that I'm making. And then I've drilled a hole about 15 centimetres or half a foot from the base of the pipe it's all the way through, large enough so I can fit some wire through. Then when I've pulled it over the top of the star post, I've tried to marry it up with a hole in the post itself, ran some wire through and that pretty much all holds it nicely in place. It's nice and firm, it's not going to lift out, it's not going to full push down any further and that's pretty much all how I have them secured together. I find it works perfectly, I've never had any issues with it lifting as I said before with storms so I'm pretty sold on using that method. 
So just further up on this hoop, you can see how I've used a gal screw just to fasten two sections of overlapping top hat onto the uh, hoop itself. And I've also used a length of wire that's come down here and it's just been twisted in place to help secure it onto the hoop. Um, the only reason I've overlapped the top hat there is because we can only bring home certain length things with our car on the roof rack. So it, it works really well. I've never had any issues with it lifting at all. I have seen some people though suggest that you put it on the underside, the top hat that is, and that way there's no jagged edges for the shade cloth to pull on or get caught on as you're dragging it on and off the hoop. So that might be something to keep in mind, but I really have had no issue at all um, put, pulling it over the top here like this. Having these battens over the top is a bit of a bonus for us too because we can attach some old recycled hay baling twine, use tomato clips or cucumber clips just to hold up our plants. Here we've got some Roma tomatoes and some that are almost ripe down there. Being uh, wicking beds, they have a reservoir, a plastic line reservoir down the bottom. So if I was to drive a stake through there, it would basically ruin the whole purpose of the bed and I wouldn't be able to hold any water in the base. So the plants could have access to it all the time. So in our situation, having these battens over the top serves a dual purpose as a way to support our plants that we grow underneath. As for keeping fruit fly out, I found these little houses have done a very good job at keeping them out in the past. Um, down here you'll notice that I haven't actually got it secured to the ground at all, it's just sitting on top of the pavers. I don't really think that it's a real issue not having it secured to the ground, fruit fly won't crawl under. I don't have it fully secured all around the doorway at the front there either and this green 50% uh, down the side, it's just hanging down beside the bed itself and I will be using a little bit of wire just to try and keep it a bit closer. Um, that'll also help keep the uh, grasshoppers out when they start to boost in numbers. For you folks who are growing your brassicas at the moment in cooler areas, a little house like this also comes in handy because it keeps out the cabbage butterflies the deposit eggs that grow into these little fellas here, the little cabbage caterpillars, they pretty much all leave the holes in your leaves. We've got a couple of um, coloured cauliflower on here still, so we need a little bit of extra protection on them because I don't want to basically yeah, lose them to these little blighters. Normally we'd spray with a dipole spray, but we've had one of our wettest Septembers in a while. I think we've had three times the rain we normally get. So every time I've sprayed with dipole, it pretty much will wash us straight off. Our oh, dipole, by the way, is Bacillus thuringiensis, a bacterial insecticide. Just quickly, for you folks worried about not getting a very good pollination rate inside a hoop house with things like your tomatoes, your peppers and eggplants, all you pretty much will need to do is just give them a bit of a tap like that, or you can give the whole bush a bit of a shake, and that will be enough for the pollen to drop from the male part of the flower onto the female, and you'll have a fruit form. So it's not a big issue with these guys here. Things like your squash and your cucumbers that have both male and female flowers, where you need a pollinator to take the pollen from the male male to the female flower before you'll get a fruit you will have issues there but for these guys here all you need to do is give it a little bit of a shake and you should have a fantastic pollination rate inside of a hoop house one thing I have noticed in the hoop house here is we do have a very healthy population of ladybugs. Um, when I was putting the shade cloth on the other day, I noticed a fair few on the um, cloth as it went over and also one or two of the little larvae as well. So hopefully with that population trapped in here, um, yeah, they will make a fairly huge dent in any aphids that are in here. I haven't seen any to tell you the truth, but for these guys to be in there in that greater number, there may be some under this sea of volunteer parcel down there somewhere. That's one thing you have to keep in mind when you're growing in a small enclosed area like this. If you do have a pest like aphids in here, they can multiply out of control very, very quickly. The same with white fly. And one issue we do have in here already, it happened before the netting went over, is mites. I've had a bit of a mite outbreak now that the weather's starting to warm up a bit. You can tell by the bronzing on the top of um, the stem there and the top of the tomatoes. I've also got a very, very sick um, charred out there or silver beet that's been affected by them as well. So I'm actually um, contacting some people here in southeast Queensland who uh, breed up beneficial mites. So I'm going to release them here in the greenhouse or hoop house I should say and hopefully they'll um, build up in numbers and be able to take on any of these mites. We might pop on down to the blueberry I think. So down here in the back corner of the property we have our southern high bush blueberry and it's just been covered by some veggie net scrap from the other section of the hoop house. Oh, this southern high bush, by the way, is supposed to grow really well in our warmer climate, so that's why we chose this variety. 
Now these guys here, generally we don't have any issues with them being stung by the Queensland fruit fly. But last year we lost pretty much all the whole crop to the little blighters. Um, I opened up a couple and found the maggots in there. And then after that, as I went through them, I found sting marks on pretty much all every berry. So we, um, yeah, this year decided to cover it. Now the method I've used is a very basic one. There's a bamboo stake in the middle. Thank you very much, RJ. And I've just um, put that veggie net over the top and down around the base here, I've used those same clamps just to gather it together and yeah, hold it in place. And the beauty of these clamps having such a large diameter, you can actually fit a fair amount of the cloth in there and get it to hold tight. Now there are a few flaws in this though, I will let you know. Uh, number one is there's a couple of flowers in there that haven't pollinated yet, but because I saw the female fruit fly, I definitely did want the bulk of the fruit covered up. The other issue um, I could run into is it, where the fruit is touching the cloth itself, uh, the fruit fly could come up and actually sting that. So uh, my little job for during the week is to work out some way to get some stakes to hold the veggie net away from the sides a bit. So I thought this might interest a few of you folks who are growing in containers. Very makeshift, not that attractive, but it's definitely going to do the job. So these little hoop houses are a great way to keep your veggie beds protected from things like fruit flies and also the cabbage butterflies and other flying insects that like to come in and basically destroy your food. So it might give you guys a bit of an idea on how you can try and save your crop from being attacked. Bianca and I were talking and we've decided that we should knock together a small little hoop house in the backyard to protect some tomatoes and a pepino from the fruit fly. So we'll probably knock together a small little version, a lot smaller than this one behind me here. And I'll post a clip on that if you folks are interested. Just let me know in the comments section below and I'll pull the camera out when we knock it together. So I hope you've enjoyed the clip, folks. And for you folks who haven't subscribed already, you can do so by clicking on that little eggplant man down there in the bottom corner. That'll take you to a page and you can subscribe and you'll get notifications whenever we upload clips on the soil patch or aquaponics or whatever we're filming at the time. Might even be a recipe from the kitchen. I do hope everyone is well and happy and that you have enjoyed the clip and I will catch you next time. Cheers, folks. Have a great one. With things warming up in the veggie patch here in subtropical, I just got buzzed by a lorikeet.